Well, howdy. My name is Dave. I run a very small streaming radio station. And some folks found out I was using this DNR web station console. They had some questions about how to integrate it with a streaming radio station, how to get various functions to interact. And on this particular video, we're going to talk about taking the control signals that this station can generate and have them control the software that's running the automation. In my case, I'm using Radio DJ, but there's an awful lot that goes on that you might be able to do with your software if it's different. Let's take a look. All right, here's the web station. Let's go over some of these controls so you'll know which ones can cause triggers on the computer. I'm going to interrupt myself to cover the exact triggers that are available on the console's channels, as well as to talk about the two ways that the station automation software can be triggered by activities occurring on the console. Let's talk about the complete list of triggers first. Each mixing channel has two inputs. D&R configured the web station to have separate responses for each trigger on each input. Here's an example. Let's say you're using channel 4 in the web station and you have a USB audio connection to an audio player in your station automation. In addition, you have a CD player connected to the line input on channel 4, that same channel. When the USB player is selected as the input on the console, you want the on button to send a signal to the USB player to tell the USB player, start playing. When the channel input is selected to the CD audio, you do not want the USB player to start when you turn the channel on. You can pick different responses for different inputs. All of the mixer channels have the same triggers. Oh, by the way, in the documentation and in the computer software, DNR refers to each channel as a module, so don't be confused. Here is a list of all the triggers available for the mixing channels. You can pause the video if you'd like to review them all. Again, notice that you can map different responses depending on which input is selected for a channel. If you have any questions, make sure you drop it down into the comments. We'll take a look at those. Now here's all the triggers for the 12 command buttons. Notice that there's no on or off state. Each time you press a command button, it's going to send the very same response. Now during this part of the video, you've been seeing dialog boxes from the keyboard mapper. The keyboard mapper is used to send actual keystrokes to your station automation. Now some station automation can respond to USB human interface device or HID signals. The web station sends its trigger information through the USB connection using HID signals. If your station automation software can recognize HID signals, then it can use those signals sent by the web station. Otherwise, you'll need to use the keyboard mapper to send actual keystrokes to your station application. My station uses Radio DJ as the automation software. Radio DJ does not utilize USB HID signals, so I have to use the keyboard mapper. All right, let's jump onto the computer and I will show you how you take the triggers that are happening on the console and get those into your software. First thing, we have to make sure that the web station controller is running. This is what takes the information that's happening in the console, receives it into the computer, then makes that information available to the metering application. It makes it available to the uh, keyboard application, which we're going to, to be working on as well. So we'll focus on the keyboard application first. So our web station control is running. And then you can see that we also have Radio DJ is running. And yes, this is actually streaming right now to my station on the internet. And if we go to the configuration for Radio DJ, there is an option for shortcuts. These are keyboard shortcuts that will toggle application functions. So if we come into this and we look at the listing, there's a bunch of different things we can do here. The first one you see is main play. And you can see that I have that mapped so that it takes the control key, the shift key, 
and the P key at the same time. So those all have to be pressed together in order to activate play. If we jump to the keyboard mapper, now this is part of the software that comes with your web station, you'll notice that the very first control button, and this is the bank, the bank of 12 control buttons, button A1, which is that top left one, sends a control shift P. Well, that maps exactly to the control shift P that has been configured within the shortcuts editor of Radio DJ. So Radio DJ knows that when it receives that command, control shift P, it's the same as clicking on the play button for the main player in Radio DJ. This is how we end up mapping the actions that are happening on the web station into the software. So again, we can take a look at some of these others. Uh, main stop with fade. So that means we're going to stop playback, but we're going to do it gently. It's not going to be abrupt. Control shift X is the keystrokes, keystrokes for that. Well, control shift X, we look about halfway down the list of control buttons we see. Control shift X, well, that's in the B column, the first button. That is going to send that combination and it's going to stop the system from playing and it's going to fade. For all of the instant players, they're called carts within the shortcuts editor and you can see that I have control shift F1, control shift F2 and so on for 10 cart interfaces that appear within Radio DJ. Those map to the control buttons on the console through the control buttons in the web station key map. They translate directly. So are there any shortcomings for doing this? Yes, there's one principal shortcoming. If you don't have your target application, which in my case is Radio DJ, if it is not in the foreground, that is to say that perhaps I have started a different application. Maybe I have started my file manager. At this point, the keystrokes are going to go to the file manager. They're not going to go to Radio DJ. Radio DJ has to be in the foreground to receive the keystrokes from the web station key mapper. So that's a drawback. So that's how we get keystrokes associated with a button, getting the button associated with the web station key mapper and then getting those to be mapped correctly inside a radio DJ. If you have any questions, I hope you'll leave me a note in the comments and thanks very much. There will be more videos that are included in this series.